Hey everyone, this is Red X Rain here with another episode of Let's Play The Goonies 2 for the NES. So last time we saved a couple Goonies, picked up some very important items that we're going to use throughout the rest of our journey, and I uh, haven't shown off the, oops, the Mazel Tov cocktail, uh, or the sort of secondary uh, weapon spot. So if you see at the top there, there's those two... Uh, two squares, so my main weapon is my yo-yo, uh, but if you press up and B, you also have a secondary weapon. Ugh, God. Secondary weapon that you can use, and it's around uh, this point that the, the Molotov cocktail actually becomes a very uh, worthwhile uh, weapon to have. So we're sort of retracing our steps here. This is where the, the level began. But if we go through the opposite door. Yeah, here we are on the orange cave side. And there actually isn't much to do on this side, but I do want to... Sh uh, oh, God. Uh, but there is one important fella that I want to go see, and we might come see him later. And these freaking bats. The, uh... Well, I'll talk about the bats in a second, but uh, let's uh, use our candle here. And if we go forward... There's the Kunami Man, as he is called, uh, and he just fills up your energy for free. Which is pretty boss, and uh, as you know, usual, when you're in an empty room like this, it usually means you have to hit the wall or use your magic glasses or something, but got a few extra keys, and there's nothing on this side. If we go to the left, this is basically just one big square of an area, so if I go forward, I can see the Konami man one more time. And uh, he'll keep refilling your, your health as long as you keep visiting him. Um, unless you punch him, actually. He says something like, uh, because you hit me, I won't help you anymore. Or something like that. But um, So, uh, you know, you can hit all the old people that, you, all the old people that you'd like, but uh, don't hit Konami man. Um, you know, don't, uh, don't burn bridges is the lesson there. All right, so the last uh, sort of new uh, undiscovered section of this red cave area is this right side here from that uh, main door. And we just got to make it across some slightly tricky platforms. God, I, those bats. They they uh, they remind me a lot of... Uh, uh, you know, I've never been too uh, clear if it's Kisi or Kees from... Um, the Legend of Zelda. Oops, I went the wrong way. And another orange cave area. Um, yeah, they just kind of look like it, and they're they're just as annoying as. Uh, oh well, here I am getting distracted and not jumping. Um, yeah, just as annoying as Kisi or or Kees. I like Kees better, but I don't know. I'm not too sure. And there's one of them right now. Let's see if I can just get up here before he attacks me. All right. Oh, my God. This area of the game. I hate this area. So there's these enemies here, these guys, and they won't actually hurt you. But if they touch you like that, you may have heard that game sound. I uh, I lost my boomerang. And, uh, and there's no getting it back. I don't think you can go back to the room and get the boomerang again. But um, that's all they do. They just take your boomerang. It's a very unusual, um, very unusual enemy to just, you know, take one item and not hurt you or anything, but, and it's not, I mean, the boomerang's good, but it's not, you know, you can definitely, oh god, I am doing terrible on health, um, you can easily beat the game without the boomerang, but, uh, before I move on, I'm actually gonna do some health grinding here with the snake, and there's a spider up there, so, uh, I'm gonna do that, and I'll meet you guys here in a second. It's taking forever. Okay. Alright, I can deal with one and a half bars of health. It's not great, but, uh, it's good enough for now. So, let's see if I can time this right, and maybe I can get, maybe I can get one more here. No. Okay. And we'll go forward, light up our candle... And, of course, you could use your key to unlock that safe, but they're pretty pretty useless. As are the magic locator devices, if you know where the Goonies are. Uh, they do help you find them if you don't know, but um, I have everything 
have everything mapped out, so. But still, I'm a... I'm a collector, a completionist, I like to show off everything. Oh, these guys are new enemies that are a real pain in the ass, and he just vanished. Okay, he jumped down there, apparently. Uh, it's really not worth it to fight them. Uh, they take a lot of hits. Yeah, it's usually better just to uh, run underneath them as they're jumping. And I think... I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. Let me, uh, let me check. Yeah, this is not where I want to be. Uh, I want to come back there eventually, so it's important that I remember where it is, but uh, but that'll, uh, maybe by the end of this episode, probably the next episode, though. What I do want to do is go to the right, and not on the top, and I have to deal with those guys. Oh, come on, he's going to be really hard to run underneath. Yep, oh, great. And a very conspicuous empty room means, uh, it's hammer time. Or is it glasses time? No, it must be, must be the hammer. I don't know, I just shouldn't second guess myself. There's a door. And another door. And we're in another area. This time the green cave area. And enemies are a little bit quicker here. I think I'm gonna use that so I don't, uh, so I'm, I'm being a, I'm being a little too uh, a little too reckless I think with the uh, with my health meter here. Oh well, at least I got that. And another door and another very conspicuous empty room. I keep thinking I have to use the glasses. I don't know why. I feel like the glasses are just a cooler thing to use than the hammer. Really, not the hammer either. Just the fist. Okay, all right. You well, could take some more bombs here. The firebox, as they call it. Come back outside. Yeah, I'm a little bummed that I uh, lost the uh, boomerang. Not necessarily because I, I use it as a weapon, um, but just because I'm such a completionist. I hate that I, don't, uh, that I won't have every item collected at the end of the game. Oh, jeez. I should have waited for him to just jump off the cliff, but... Just rushing through everything, which is not not the way to play this game. Actually, it it rewards you for taking your time. So this is a weird sort of system of doors. And let's see if this one's the hammer. That's the one with the hammer. Okay. And this one's got the glasses. Yes. Okay. And so this is actually one of the few instances. No, not the hammer. One of the few instances where you do want to open the safes because uh, that one contains the diving suit, which is. Very, very important to beating the game. Uh, nothing in that one, though. So we'll just... I'm getting all sorts of turned around. Uh, to the right, and then back. There we go. I hate those doors that you can't see behind you. It, uh, it just makes a very difficult game even more difficult. And, uh... Yeah, I, uh, I died again. Great. At the hands of a snake. Ah, oh, my own foolish pride. I tried to jump, and he just ran right into me. So I got just one life left, and we're not even halfway through the game. I, uh, oh, I just feel foolish. Well, I guess that just adds to the challenge and the suspense of the game. Holy crap, I actually hit the key seat. Look at that. I'm usually terrible at that. And one of these guys, they remind me of something too, something from some TV show, I can't remember what it is. Maybe by the end of the episode I'll remember. Um, let's see, what is it here? No. You know it's one of three things. Hammer? Yeah. And again, we have a uh, safe that we actually want to open. And it's the uh, waterproof coat. Uh, which goes along with the diving suit. I think. I, well, yeah, I think you need both to get into the, uh, area that we're gonna head to, uh, pretty soon. If not, it's nice to have everything, because I can't imagine what else the waterproof coat would do. <laughs> he just, look at that guy, just took that leap of faith, and it just didn't pay off for him, poor guy. Although, actually, I might know what the waterproof coat does. It might save you from, like, the geysers in this area. I thought I could jump over him. Clearly not. 
uh, these things here, these geysers. I think, I think just like the helmet reflects the, um, oh jeez, come on. Just like the helmet reflects the, uh, uh, icicles in the Arctic area, the waterproof coat might help you not get hit by that water. I don't even know if it damages you. So I don't know, I'm just, uh, I sort of, you know, had to do a crash course in this game, as I said last time. I, I'd never played it before, and I was thinking about doing it blind, but it would have just been, uh, an impossible mess blind, and already I'm running out of health. Um, let's see. This is the infinite loop room. If you go to the right, you'll just keep going to the right forever. But if you use the hammer on that wall, you get to go into another empty blank room, and I am just, I am hard set on using those glasses <laughs> this episode. I I wear glasses, so maybe it's just, you know, I, I think glasses are cool. Uh, but we just got some extra keys, and see if I just keep going to the right, it's a never-ending loop of doors. But as soon as you go left, you're back at the door that you, uh, or the room that you entered. Kind of a fun house trick to pull on you, I guess. I don't and I uh, can't go that way. I gotta go all the way to the top and bump my head. And all right, let's take this nice and slow. There's no reason to get hit by his little projectiles or run into him or. And I still did it. God, I. Uh, I need to start taking my own advice. All right, and in here we have. There's the one with the glasses. Okay, I feel vindicated by the, the using the glasses. And we saved another Goonie. You saved my life. All right. And I think that about does it for over here. There's just another safe. And is there anything on this side? No. Okay. Uh, so that takes care of, what is that, three Goonies now? Which, luckily, uh, as you can see, uh, as every Goonie does, they give you a extra life bar and refills your health to the maximum. So I really wish I would have just taken my time and not gotten killed by that snake earlier, I would have gotten a full health refill, but say lovey. And so now we have a lot of, if I recall correctly, we have a lot of backtracking to do. There is plenty of backtracking in this game, and it's, uh, it is honestly one of the, the major weaknesses of this game. I, I you know, I give... I guess I give the developers some credit for, you know, making a, a pretty unique game. This weird mix of first-person and uh, side-scroller. And the first person, actually, it uh, it reminds me, uh, one of my viewers uh, had suggested that it looks like um, those uh, rooms are just, like, covered with blood. And they are very uh, dark. Oh, a Fratelli brother. Uh, very dark rooms. They do look like they're just splattered with blood. Um... But that first-person room, they remind me of um, the first-person portions of... Uh, what's that game? Uh, the It's another movie game. Uh, oh, jeez. Kesey. And I hate making that jump. I almost always die at that jump. I had to practice it for quite a bit. Nice. Uh, Fred, you know, it reminds me of Friday the 13th, the first-person portions where you go into the buildings. Although I know that there are plenty of other games that actually use an interface that's more... Uh, appropriate, like Shadowgate, which, uh, I think Shadowgate came out probably about the same time. Well, I guess Friday the 13th came out about the same time, too. It's also an NES game, so. But it was a different sort of, uh, a unique style of gameplay that never really caught on too much. And I made it across my least favorite part, the bridge. And as you can see, I'm just retracing my steps back to the uh, <clears throat> to the Red Cave area, which is honestly more than, uh, more than, like, usually I, I feel like, you know, wherever a game starts kind of tends to be the, oops, and I went the wrong way, tends to be, like, the main hub kind of thing, but really the Red Cave is, is where a lot of, uh, the interconnectedness of all the zones, um, occurs. Not so much the, um, the Fratelli's hideout sort of attic -y looking area that you start off in. So we're just, uh, yeah, just retracing those steps, and I thought that there was a, uh, platform. There it is, okay. I probably wasn't standing far, far enough to the left. 
And uh, that health is dwindling. I probably should have gone to see the Kunami man, because he would heal me, but... Uh, the next Goonie isn't too far away. I should be able to make it. And um, now we have to go to uh, back to an area where uh, I'm not a particular fan. Let's try and get some health here. Come on. Oh, stingy enemies. All right. Stingy drops, I guess. So, yes, we're back to the Arctic Zone with all its slippery, slidey ridiculousness. And you may recall we were here uh, last episode, and the walrus up here? Ah, uh, still nothing on that health. There's the moonwalking polar bear. I love that freaking polar bear. So you may recall this area from earlier. If we go forward and go to the left, we have the uh, hole here. Well, I'm going to let you guys uh, ponder what we're going to do next time, because this episode is running a little bit long. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.